later on and we have moved over to the mill to show you this. This is a shop belt indexing dividing head. All it is is a basically a half inch shaft through this aluminum block. The block is clamped in the vise. On this end we have a, a 5 8 Jacobs chuck. And then on this end <clears throat> we can glue a paper dividing wheel. The principle this works off of, I got this off of the internet and I've used it and it works, is that a modern laser printer is going to be accurate to within just a few thousandths of whatever it prints out on the page. If I print up a 19 segment dividing wheel, like so, put it onto this uh, indicator face and then have a pointer up against the face then I can index this 19 tooth gear without any trouble. Now, there are only a couple things about this setup that are critical. One is that there cannot be any rotational slippage in this shaft. If this part rotates in relation to the indicator, then your part's going to be useless. It has to be locked in tight. So I have double and triple tightened the chuck. I have confirmed that this is nice and snug. This, that's the new spacer by the way. This is nice and snug up against here so that this part cannot rotate on that shaft. And then the other thing is that this pointer needs to be very solid. And so I have mine bolted straight into one of the clamping slots and it needs to be very close so if you look here I actually have it touching the surface and by having the pointer very close to the line then it it greatly limits my likelihood of having an error of where the line is indicated so for my purposes I will stop the kind of the instant that the white disappears at the very outer track that's what I will consider a point and at that point I will lock in this screw here which locks the shaft down from turning so the shaft can turn until I lock down these two screws I did two for overkill Last time I used this, I realized that probably only one is really necessary. So anyway, I'll lock down one or more screws, then the shaft cannot turn, and then we can run the table back and forth through the milling cutter. So the milling cutter I'll be using is the set of Chinese milling cutters that I got off of eBay. I believe we'll be using a number five. I'll have to look it up pretty sure it's a number five cutter for 17 to 19 teeth and then for an arbor I have this homemade arbor that I made it is substantially a uh, what is that a three-quarter inch bolt I think that I turned the head off on this end to fit up inside the R8 shank slot and then this end is a piece of steel that I turned to the correct taper so it's just really kind of a sleeve going up over the threaded end of the bolt. You can just see the bolt threads down through there. And then I used a piece of, I'm pretty sure that's one inch pipe, uh, kind of to act as a spacer. And then the milling cutter slides right over those threads right there and engages that key and tighten down the bolt. The most recent gear that I made with it is that one right there. It's a little filthy, but it's the uh, sliding gear on a South Bend Heavy 10. My old one was missing, I forget, one or two or three teeth. And um, I thought about brazing it up and trying to repair it and all that, but I decided I had some aluminum and I just made a new one. So however many teeth that is, was cut using this setup and took a little time but it worked like a charm now i do actually have a dro installed using this old android cell phone using what's called touch dro you may have also heard it called blue dro blue dro is a compiled 
package that's sold as a product. Touch DRO is a project where you do it yourself. I went the, wait for it, I went the do-it-yourself route. I followed the instructions on Yuri's page and uh, worked like a charm. Total investment, um, $77 I think for the two scales. I have them under an aluminum channel, keep them clean and dry. And then inside here is the little um, Texas Instruments board that he talks about buying. And I bought the little Texas Instruments board and a little Bluetooth uh, transceiver module. Put it together, followed the instructions, and voila! I have a DRO. So we will take advantage of this because we know that from touch off to the full depth of the tooth root should be 0.122. So all I have to do, I'm centered up on the round of the blank, and all I have to do now is touch off the very face of the blank and then go in another 0.122 and make 19 cuts and the gear is done. So let's touch off the first surface and start up the phase converter. There's the first tooth. I'll bring you in and give you a close-up. So this little 19 tooth gear is going to be the most challenging because it's so close to the arbor. So I'm very near to the chuck head and I'm very near to the clamping nut on the arbor. So I'm just going to have to be careful. Nice looking tooth.
And there it is, one 19 tooth gear. Let's see if it works. Okay, so sometimes you gotta take the good with the bad. Take the bad with the good, as the case may be. So I filed a little bit on that banjo right there to get it to be able to engage. And in kind of uh, slinging the banjo up and down to check its fit, I struck one of these teeth and it snapped it clean off. So whatever this material is, it is not HDPE. And it is apparently too brittle for this application. However, I'm going to flip it around and at least try to take a test cut with the tooth that's left and just confirm that my Excel spreadsheet is correct and that it does cut the threads that I think it's going to cut before I spend a bunch more time. So let's uh, spin it around, take a test cut and see what happens. All right, so time to reveal the secret. I also bought an, a piece of HDPE off of eBay. Paid $8 for it. And I've now chucked it up and I'll be repeating the process. And I can already tell that it is completely different. This long, that clearly has some long chains. Cuts totally different, acts totally different. So hopefully this will work. I'll bring you back after I have the center board out to 624 and the um, keyway cut in it again and back in the mill. Seems to go in place okay. 
see about that. And just seems to sink, okay. That appears to be center. All right, so as far as I can tell, this is exact. All right, according to my chart, <laughs> with a 19 tooth stud gear and the gearbox set for 11 and a half, I should get a 1.75 metric thread. So, let's see what happens. All right, that looks about right. thread gauge and see if it's a 1.75 all right the moment of truth I'll bring you in close so you can see it with me is this a 1.75 thread yes Yes, it is. All right, it works. The chart is correct. Now, all I need to do is make a 37, a 34, a 26, and a 33. I'll make those tomorrow. And then I'll have metric threading capability on my South Bend lathe Total cost, $8. Not too shabby. Thanks for watching.